Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Which of the following articles in the directive principles are based on Gandhian principles? Article 40, Article 43, Article 46, Article 47, Article 49. The answer to this is 1, 2, 3 and 4 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to liquor as well as the Mahatma Gandhi principles. Let us try and understand which of these articles are based on Gandhian principles with reference to the directive principles of the state policy. We have article 40, article 43, article 43b, article 46, Article 47 and Article 48 which deal with the Gandhian principles of the directive principles of state policy. One of the important pointers from the preliminary examination point of view is that when we consider the directive principles of the state policy, we have the socialistic principle, we have the Gandhian principle, we also have the liberal principle. When we speak about the Gandhian principle, these were the very ethos and principles which Gandhiji had practiced, which Gandhiji wanted in the form of laws. So taking these ethos we have it in the form of constitution. So remember all these Gandhian principles when it comes to directive principles are only in number 40s and not in 30s or in 50s. This is one of the important pointers from the preliminary examination point of view. Now when you look into this we have article 40, article 43, article 46 and article 47 which belongs to the Gandhian principles and article 49 does not fall under the Gandhian principle. Now let's look into the next practice question. The constitutional amendment that placed the Tamil Nadu Reservations Act of 1994 in the 9th schedule to protect it from judicial review as it provided for 69% of reservation far exceeding the 50% ceiling is 62nd Constitutional Amendment Act, 68th Constitutional Amendment Act, 76th Constitutional Amendment Act, 79th Constitutional Amendment Act. The answer to this is 76th Constitutional Amendment Act. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to reservation in the state of Tamil Nadu. When we speak about the state of Tamil Nadu, it is one of those states where the reservation quota is far exceeded the 50%. How are they able to do it? That is because this particular legislation is placed in the 9th schedule. What is so unique about the 9th schedule? Those acts which are placed by the legislature under the 9th schedule earlier was not being reviewed by the Supreme Court of India or the judicial system, which basically means if the central government wants certain laws or the state government wants certain laws not to be reviewed and not to be judged by the judiciary in India earlier it was added as part of the 9th schedule but we have a landmark judgment in the form of IR Coelho case. So according to this IR Coelho case what exactly did the Supreme Court say? The Supreme Court said even if it is those laws that are added in the 9th schedule since judicial review is part of the basic structure every other law if it is violating the fundamental rights and the basic structure can be reviewed by the judiciary. Up until then if there was a law added in the 9th schedule the judiciary had no provision to look into such laws but with this particular judgment it said even if it is placed in the 9th schedule if it is violating some key important provisions of the basic structure the judiciary can review it as part of the judicial review doctrine. This was the landmark judgment called as the IR Coilo case. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statements. Neutrinos are not affected by electromagnetic radiation. The operation of India based neutrino observatory will have no release of radioactive or toxic substances. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is both. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to neutrino observatory project. This is a proposal made by the Tamil Nadu government where they are requesting the central government to drop the neutrino observatory project which is currently based in Tamil Nadu. When we speak about the neutrino project, where is it based in? It is based in the state of Tamil Nadu. It involves the construction of underground laboratory. The project location was initially decided to be in Nilgiris but because of the environmental habitat, it was shifted to Bodhi West Hills. What are we speaking about? 
about? We are speaking about neutrinos. What are these neutrinos? These are electrically neutral, elementary weakly interacting subatomic particles and they belong to the lepton family. Since the neutrinos are electrically neutral, they are not affected by the electromagnetic forces which act on these electrons. Now when we look into the first option, neutrinos are not affected by electromagnetic radiation. Yes, this statement is right. And when we look into the second statement, the operation of India-based neutrino observatory will have no release of radioactive or toxic substances. The second statement is also right. So the answer to this would be both 1 and 2. Now let's look into the next practice question. With respect to Iravadi dolphins, which of the following statements is are correct? The Iravadi dolphin is found in three rivers in South and Southeast Asia. The Iravadi, the Mayakam and the Mekong, its IUCN status is endangered. The Iravadi dolphin is included in the Indian Wildlife Protection Act Schedule 1. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the Iravadi dolphins. When we look into the options, we have the first option where the first option is right. The Iravadi dolphin is found in three rivers in South and Southeast Asia, which includes the Iravadi, which is in the country of Myanmar, Mahakam, which happens to be in Indonesia, and Mekong, which happens to be in Cambodia. If you look into the IUCN red list, we have Iravadi dolphin, which is present as endangered, and when we look into the third option, the Iravadi dolphin is included in the Indian Wildlife Protection Act of Schedule 1, which means it is provided that level of protection which is provided to the Indian tigers. When we look into the Iravadi dolphins, it also has multiple threats as well. What are these threats? Large number of this species are killed by entanglement in the fishing nets and unfortunately because of the anthropogenic induced factors like the construction of the dams or for example agriculture activity which is also becoming a threat to these species and added to it habitat degradation and population fragmentation have also led to the loss of the species as well. Now let's look into the next practice question. This is a question which we asked in our yesterday's daily quiz. It says dearness allowance to central government staff is usually changed by the government on the basis of and the answer that we had given was all India consumer price index. There is a lot of confusion with respect to this question where most of the students had also marked consumer price index for industrial workers. Where did we base our question from? We did take this question from the Indian Express article. So the Indian Express article clearly points out it is All India Consumer Price Index and which is why we also gave you that as the answer. So according to Indian Express and the article that we have picked up from, the answer to this would be all India Consumer Price Index. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which among the following steps is most likely to be taken at the time of an economic recession? Cut in tax rates accompanied by increase in interest rate, increase in expenditure on public projects, increase in tax rates accompanied by reduction of interest rate, reduction of expenditure on public project. Which of them will happen when there is economic recession? The answer to this is increase in expenditure on public projects. So whenever there is recession, what would happen? The government would start pumping in money, the government would provide economic stimulus and it will start spending on the public projects. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2021. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is FASTA. What does FASTA stands for? It stands for fast and secure transmission of electronic records. What is it? This happens to be a software initiated by the Supreme Court where it will communicate the interim orders, stay orders, bail orders which are passed by the Supreme Court, which are passed by the High Court to the prison authorities as well as other authorities. So what would happen? Let me give you an example. Let's say for example, there is a Supreme Court of India which has issued the bail order. We have the High Court of a respective stage which might also issue the bail order but ideally whenever the bail order is released what should happen the jail authorities or the prison authorities will have to immediately release that particular person but what would happen as of now we have the physical copies which has to go from the supreme court or the high court and should reach the prison authorities it may take a day or two in fact it may also take three to four days as well until and unless these copies are not received by these prison authorities they will not leave that person 
which means there is violation of the liberty in spite of the bail orders. So, which is why the Supreme Court has decided that instead of sending the physical copy to the prison authorities, where that person who is behind the bars has to stay there, what about sending it via the communication channels? What about sending it via the electronic channels? So, one such initiative where the Supreme Court has initiated, where bail orders and other orders are sent to the authorities where the action can be initiated is what is called as FASTA. So basically what would happen? The purpose of the FASTA is orders passed by the Supreme Court or the High Court to transmit this information or the order safely to a party on an electronic platform. So FASTA will communicate the bail orders and other where the Supreme Court and the High Court will also have the digital signature on it. So these authorities who receive it via the electronic mode will look into the digital signature. They would have got permission from the judiciary and ultimately this person who is in prison can be set free and his liberty will be reinstated. Added to it, we also have the Supreme Court of India, which has also issued directives to the chief secretaries of the respective state governments. Why? That is because this is happening on the internet platform. There are a number of jails where the internet is not provided. Even if the internet is provided, the speed might not be able to match up to it. So what is required is the internet facility, where the Supreme Court of India has issued notifications to the respective chief secretaries where it is asking these chief secretaries to provide internet and internet with relevant amount of speed. So basically, what should they do? They should arrange the internet facility wherever it is not available and ultimately the prison authorities would be able to download this copy, check for the authenticity and ultimately release these people who are behind the pass. What is the significance of this initiative? It will involve no third party interference. This will ensure confidentiality safety and security of the orders and at the same time physical copy need not be waited for since they have the digital copy the person can be let go and ultimately liberty is reinstated to that particular person it is this that we have to understand in reference to this article so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best